Hey guys, uh, how's it growing? Hey, it's OG Scotty V. What's going on? What's the deal? What's the deal? You know how it is. You feel me? So, you feel me? <laughs> no, I don't can do that yet. Anyways, um, so I first started smoking weed when I was grade, like between grade 7 and 8. I got, yeah, yeah, between grades, just going into high school. And high school, it's grade 8, is high school here in Canada. So I just started smoking weed when I was that young, probably 14 years old, which is so wrong. It fucks with your brain system. Then you get, my short-term memory is just fucking hooped right now, man. It's, fuck, I've got none of it left. I don't even have long-term memory, so it's it's pretty hard for me to remember some of these stories. But uh, I first started selling weed between grade 8 you know, between grade 9 and 10, and uh, how I did, I met, I, we used to have this place called Bows and Bells in North Van, and it was on 15th Street, right across from the cop shop, pretty much, and it was an arcade and a pool hall. We used to ride our BMX there, and just all the kind of hoodlum jean jacket, wearing, like the Lynn Valley tuxedo was a, was a jean jacket, your jeans, and a Mac jacket, you know, or, you know, a jean jacket with the cut-off sleeves, or a leather jacket, like, that's the kind of, sh that's all we wore back then, and, uh, and long hair, right, <clears throat> and, uh, so, when I stood, so we used to go to this place, Bows and Bells, and, and I remember I was switching schools, and I ran into this guy, Robbie, my buddy, like my buddy, I'm still friends with him, and uh, I ran into him, and I'm like, hey man, you're, so I heard you're going to, anyway, <clears throat> this is funny, the funny way I ran it, he's like a small little guy, and there's his, this other buddy, Big Rob, this, this guy was uh, fucking, he was in grade eight, he was like four years younger than all of us, but he was, fuck, he was such a big guy, and he was, he was good at boxing, that, like, that guy in grade eight could lick any guy in grade 12, no, no word of a lie, like, fuck, it was just, it was hilarious, his gross spurt was just so, anyways. So I see fucking Rob, fucking double and Rob on the handle. So the little Rob's riding the BMX and big Rob's on the handlebars. And it's just it's a funny scene. Anyway, so um, I'm like, yeah, man, we should, uh, we're both going to this new school. We should start selling weed up there together. Because we were kind of selling weed and whatever at this Bows and Bells Arcade, right? And I had this good connection, this old, I'm going to tell you about Aunt B. She was this old hippie lady. We called her Aunt V, and she used to have she used to have these four or five parrots, and she would let the parrots. They didn't live in a cage. She uh, just had these branches like nailed to the wall and shit, and they'd crawl around and they would shit into a bucket. She trained them to shit into a bucket, and she would let them fly off every uh, you know every day. She'd give them her exercise. They'd just fly off, and then they'd come back. It was so fucking cool. Anyways, this is this old hippie lady, and she had this old drunk husband that ran an automotive shop down in, and he used to walk around, and he's like five foot two, and he looked like Barney Rubble from the Flintstones, and he fucking, he had this, you know, he's walking around with this jar of fucking moonshine, man, and the guy was just fucking shit-faced all day long, it was fun. Anyways, so, we meet, and we're at this Bows and Bells place selling weed, and so we're riding our bikes up and down, she just lived like four or five blocks away from the arcade. So we're riding our bikes up and down there, and she's like, okay, let's come here, boys, come here, come here. You gotta stop coming here so much. I mean, you guys are only 14. <laughs> and here's these young kids on our BMX. So you gotta kind of stop coming here so much. So listen, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you this. This is an ounce. It's 28 grams in here, and this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take this, you're gonna sell this much, then you're gonna give me this much money, and then you're gonna put this much down towards your next one. And then that's what we're gonna do. And so, and then you only need to come see me every couple of days. Well, it turns out we would take the ounce, we'd go back to, up to Ross House, and we'd roll it up back then. We'd roll it up into joints and grams, and we'd sell it at high school. And then we'd, uh, yeah, this is our routine for like, Two years we'd we'd go we'd go get our weed we'd come home and then we'd wake we'd, we'd come home roll it all up get it ready for the morning go go into school smoke weed before class come out you know during breaks sell our weed and smoke more weed and then uh after school we'd go and we used this chick 
we knew Esther worked at the Dairy Queen and we'd give her a couple of joints each day and she'd give us a full meal deal from Dairy Queen. So every day we'd come by, get our full meal deal and smoke more weed and come and go home and we'd eat dinner and I'd hop on my bike and I'd ride down to Rob's house. Then we'd ride down to Bo's and Bell's and we'd sell out the rest of what we had. And then we'd go down to Aunt B's, pick up more and come back to Rob's house and then uh, get it ready for the morning. And that's what we did for fucking years. Anyways, that's just sort of a little funny little story about how I got into selling weed and, uh, it, uh, and now it's all legal and shit. Like I, I used to get in so much trouble for that. Like just, I remember like my parents when I was young when I got caught smoking weed. Now my dad's buying and getting CBDs, getting me to get them CBDs. And I actually... <laughs> My stepmom has actually had some chocolates. I gave her some chocolates. It was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share that thing. Uh, today, it's Saturday. And uh, but just here, I'm going to give another little tip about uh, just kind of getting your shit together. Like I said, now I'm not really full recovered, but I'm going to give you some tips uh, another thing is try to, even, even if you're homeless, even if you are homeless, when you are like, find your camping area or like your, your shelter area or whatever, try and find that like away from a drug spot. Like there's a lot of, a lot of like some of the shelters and that, and that are usually in you know, hot drug areas. We'll try to get to one where there's, you know, where you can't just walk out your door and score dope, right? That's the first thing, you know, that, that that's a big thing. Like, I, like geographical, you know, move, like moving is not a solution, but it does help. I mean, if, if you have to get on a, two buses or whatever just to go score your dope, it's, it's going to make you think twice sometimes. And, uh, that's kind of a that's kind of a little thing, but anyway, so that's just a little story mixed up with a uh, little bit of advice. Like I said, I'm trying to do I don't know, like I'm trying to do some po more positive type shit, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.